Hey there everybody, Robert Taylor with Wonderscape Creations. We are going to go ahead and get started on uh, utilizing the plugins. And I want to first uh, preface this whole series uh, to help people understand. Obviously, uh, this is done in Unreal Engine. You can see that based off of what we can see right here. Now, the Ninja plugins are built on top of the game playability system. So a lot of the things that we're going to be learning about also include the game playability system. Uh, you do not need to know any C++, and that's the best part about it. And um, he does provide you with the base attributes that you would need, uh, like damage, health, stamina, things like that. Um, but he doesn't go any further into that. Um, at which point, when we get to that point, I'll introduce a, a an additional plugin made by a different uh, co uh, plugin creator uh, that allows you to create attributes in Blueprint. So you'd never have to touch uh, a line of C++ code. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, uh, and additionally, before we get started, um, I've had requests of using a different screen size um, I messed around with it, was getting frustrated with it, couldn't get any work done. Um, sorry, my brain was being frustrated. So it will stay in this ratio, but I have gone ahead um, and I've changed the size to 1.2. I'm assuming the request was because it was harder to read. Uh, so I have made everything slightly bigger so it's easier to read. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, <clears throat> the first thing that we need to do is get the inputs uh, plugin take us uh, opened in all of that. So let's go ahead and go into our plugins folder. Um, for me, I always have it open. For those of you that don't, you can always go to edit and plugins. <clears throat> Next thing we're going to do, obviously, is come into gameplay. I'm just going to go ahead and turn on all of these because I know I will be using all of them uh, throughout the series. And then obviously then we go to input for ninja input. Restart now. So while this is all restarting, <coughs> ninja input um, is built on top of the enhanced input system that was introduced right before 5 came out, I believe. Uh, that is now commonplace. Uh, it essentially enhances the enhanced input and allows for a lot of really neat things to be able to be done and it helps keep things a little more organized and ensures that you're utilizing each of the inputs that you have set up. Uh, so <clears throat> we're going to go ahead and continue on now that everything is loaded up. Uh, now that we have it started, uh, well turned on, not started, we need to make a couple of design decisions. Do we want this input ha uh, handler to be controlled through the character or the player controller? And you may be thinking that it's really not that big of a deal. Just put it in the player. And you would be, <clears throat> you would be wrong. And here's why. Um, say you drive cars uh, in your game, but you're also, you also have a third-person character. Um, if the inputs are on your character and you jump in your car, your inputs will now no longer work because your car, if you code it the way it generally is, is its own separate character and now you're controlling that character. Um, which means your controls go to a car controller and because all of your controls are on your third person controller, which is no longer loaded, um, you're stuck there. <clears throat> Whereas if you put everything on the controller itself, when you transfer from person to car, controls are going to work without an issue. So that's something that's important to note. Um, additionally, if you're just doing some quick prototyping um, of something, then obviously just putting in the player character would suffice. But for me, I always put it in a controller. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and open up the content drawer. I have a whole bunch of um, content browsers open up in my third screen. Um, so I'm going to do the best that I can to open up the content drawer to make sure you guys can see everything that we are indeed doing. So first thing we will do is I like to keep things 
organized in a unique way. You can do this how you want. I have everything game mode related in one folder. That means the very first thing that I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be going to blueprint class. And I need a player, no, not character, player controller. Now I have ninja factions and because I'll be doing that stuff down the road, I'm going to go ahead and turn that on. I mean, not turn it on, but utilize this version. But everything that we are doing currently will work in a normal player controller or your own player controller. <clears throat> so BP, my player controller, and I'm only prefacing it with my so that it's easy for me to find when I create the game mode, which I'm going to go ahead and do right now. <clears throat> game mode. Again, I'll be using uh, the Ninja Combat version of the game mode. You can use whichever one that you wish. The reason I'm using that, as you can read, it helps communicate with Ninja Factions. <clears throat> BP underscore my game mode. Um, I'm going to go ahead and open this up. <clears throat> and then this bigger so we can see it open up the content drawer and my controller is going to go right here compile and save now there's a couple more things that we need to set up in order for us to replace this and that's the third person character which i'm sure you guys know if you're starting from a third person is here in the third person folder in blueprints and because I like everything in the exact same place, I'm just going to drag the game mode, uh, drag it into the game mode, and I'm just going to copy it. Go back in here, rename it to my third person character. All right, <clears throat> now I'll place that in here. I'm going to hit compile and save. Now we will go ahead, go to the project settings and maps and modes and I'm going to look for my game mode so nothing will have changed because it's essentially the same at the moment um, and I say nothing will have changed because all of the inputs are on the player and we'll get to that in a moment now that we have that done let us go ahead and open up our player controller and on our player controller we need to add the ninja input manager <clears throat> there's a lot of ninja stuff i'm going to keep it named how it is and this is currently how everything is started uh, now that we have all of this set up so now what we need to do is we need to go into our player controller first i'm going to hit compile and save I mean, not player control. We need to go into a third person player character because of all of this, <clears throat> all of this right here is no longer needed. So we are going to go ahead and delete it, compile and save. Now that that is completely and totally removed, we can start config configuring everything. <clears throat> so. I will now go back into content and I'm going to create a new folder called input. And then we'll open it up. And the next thing we want to do is right click, come down here to Ninja Bear Studios and into input. We have input setup. So you can name this however you want. I'm going to call it NIS for Ninja Input Setup underscore. Controls. <clears throat> That's just what I choose to name mine. We're going to open this up. And as you can see at the moment, uh, it's looking for an input mapping context and then input handlers, not input actions. Um, we'll be going over that in a bit. So, well, actually, we won't be going over that in a bit. We'll be going over it very, very soon. <clears throat> 
we are first going to add three new input handlers. Um, and we're not going to go over what they, uh, how to make them at in this video, but we will be making them in the future. So we have move, look, and jump setup. If we open these up, <clears throat> we have, you know, use world space. It gives you some options. It allows you to uh, put a gameplay tag onto the input itself, which right now, this is his, and the trigger event, trigger and ongoing for move. You know, trigger and ongoing. I don't know why I just did that. Input handler triggers. They also have it. And then input handler triggers started, triggered, completed. So <clears throat> now that we have these are uh, already set up, courtesy of Ninja. We are going to go ahead and get our um, mapping context and our input actions made. Um, and I'm going to do that. The You can argue is the cheating way. Since he provides them, I don't want to use this naming convention. But if we search for them, <clears throat> we now have these. I'm going to click on move and jump. And I will spam the control C a little bit so I know I've got them. Then I'm going to come back up here into input, right click, new folder, input actions. <clears throat> Open this up, control V. Awesome. I A. Again, so that I know that there's my uh, that they're mine. If I was in my own project, it would be a completely different naming convention. But I don't want to dictate how others decide to do their naming convention. There. Now we will. Come on, go away. There we go. Change these. Come over here to move. See, there's an IA move, which is why I did the my. <coughs> Come up in here. Oops. Whoop. And then jump. There we go. Now for the input context. Open this up. Back over here, right click. If we come here to input, here's where you can create input action mappings um, that I copied and pasted. And then you have input mapping context. I'll open that up. <clears throat> IMC. Controls. I'm just going to keep it named the same. And I'll open this up. We'll hit the plus sign. You can't hit it three times. You have to do this one at a time, which is fine. I'm going to do. What's the word I'm looking for? Um, move. <clears throat> now, move can be a little on the tricky side because the way that it can be done is you either have move left and right and move forward and backward, or you have all four of them in one section, which is what we are going to do. We're going to have all four of them. And because I don't want to mess this up publicly. I'm gonna, or maybe it's in, maybe it's in this one. No. Okay. I'm gonna cheat here real quick. Pop this open, do another jump, just so that I can go to the input handlers. <clears throat> I'm gonna open up Ninja Inputs context. So I don't forget, I'm going to delete that one out. Now if we come here to move, as you can see, WSAD is already set up. So for W, we need the swizzle input axis values at XYZ. I'm going to detach that, paste that right here so that we can see it. Then I will shrink this down. <clears throat> so the first one, We'll be doing is W modifier 
swizzle input. YXZ. Okay, we are going to go there. Then we'll hit this plus sign right here on the same row as our input to create another one. And this one we will make S. Come down here to S. Modifies. And we'll hit modify twice. Our first one is a, another swizzle at YXZ. And then we're going to do negate. <clears throat> we'll do another plus sign. And this one is going to be A. Do one of the modifiers, which is negate. And then we'll hit the plus sign again. And this one will be D. I believe, if I recall correctly, we don't do anything. Yes, nothing needs to be done there. That is done. Move is done. Now then, for the last two, we have look and jump. As you can see, super easy. So let's open this up, uh, hit the plus sign here. We are going to look for look. Make sure you get the correct one. <clears throat> and then for this one, we're going to search for mouse x, y, 2d axis. And we are good there. Then we will hit the plus sign. Look for jump. And this one will have a space bar. We'll hit save. That's all we need at the moment. <clears throat> now we need to come in here to our NIS controls. Look for our IMC controls that we created just a moment ago. And now everything is good to go. Now then. Sorry. Let me here pull up my message log. <clears throat> you can ignore that. If you get it, just click on that. Everything's good to go. But anyways, now that we have this done, the reason I have this up is so that we can hit the save button. And if we come here to asset check, validating asset. Um, if there is a problem, let me just for a moment delete that. Hit save. It is letting you know there's no input handler for our jump. It searches this to, and searches these to make sure that they are uh, that there isn't an input being wait uh, not, not necessarily wasted, but that um, there's an input handler at least one for each of the input actions. So again, if we hit uh, the save, it's validating. There was no warning, so everything is good. that back for my own sanity all right so the last step is we now go back to our player controller to our input manager look for input handler setup open it up and we're going to use ours which is nis controls compile save we will hit play and as you can see i'm looking around i'm moving around i'm jumping so we have everything working as intended. So that is everything that we're going to be doing in this video. In the next one, we will start getting gas and everything set up so that we can move on to inventory. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in the next episode.